The biggest upgrades to the Sony A6700 are the new 4K 10-bit 422 color format in the footage with 4K up to 120 frames a second, and the new 26 megapixel sensor, the much improved physical controls of the camera, and the new flip-out screen. There are a lot of reasons why this probably should be your first mirrorless camera but there's a couple of reasons that I'm not gonna buy it. Now, in full disclosure, I rented this camera from my local camera shop because I wanted to test it, put together this review, but this video does have a sponsor and that's AeroPress. And if you stick around till later in the video, I'll show you how you can get a pretty good amount off uh, their Black Friday sale. I had a perfect opportunity to test this camera by taking it on a helicopter ride out to a glacier and on a dog sled trip, which makes it really great because it gets to test both the photo and the video modes of this camera in a fairly fast paced environment. And because we're in the winter time now and here in Alaska, definitely in some darker environments as well. One of the biggest upgrades that Sony made to the a6700 comes in the image quality, and that comes in both video and photo modes, making this probably one of the best beginner hybrid cameras on the market because the price is so good. With video, now we get 422 10-bit color format, which means you can shoot S-Log3 or S-Cinetone, get fantastic colors, color graded to your heart's content, and just get really amazing, incredible results out of this. The dynamic range in this camera is really good. It's on par with a lot of the full frame sensor cameras that Sony's put out, which is amazing. The fact that you can now shoot up to 4K 120 frames a second really gives you interesting and great options on how you wanna compose shots or how you wanna tell the story, how you wanna make your viewers feel with that footage. Now, one of the downsides is that 4K 120 does come with a pretty significant crop of about 1.6-ish times. So you can see here the difference when you're not filming in 4K 120 and when you are filming in 4K 120, the crop is pretty significant. But if you use a pretty wide angle lens, it's something you can deal with fairly easily. Even though this is an APS-C size sensor, it really produces some fantastic imagery. The one caveat to that is, and the one limitation to it is gonna be in low light. However, even though it's an APS-C sensor, it does do a good job at higher ISOs. You can definitely push the ISO quite a ways on this camera and still get usable, clean results. Now, when it comes to photos, we went from a 24 megapixel sensor to a 26 megapixel sensor, but this 26 megapixel sensor really gives you some nice detail, gives you some great image quality, really good photo quality. Um, Definitely why I would recommend this highly if you're looking at getting into hybrid shooting, but you've got a little bit more strict budget than you can get, say, something like an a7 IV. The photo quality out of the a6700 is really excellent. You can see here there's lots of dynamic range to work with. Of course, you can shoot raw photos, but you can also shoot now lossless compressed raw, which is a fair bit higher quality and will give you a little bit better results. We can't really talk about the image quality without jumping into the autofocus system because this has the new AI system built into it. The autofocus on this camera is nothing short of incredible. Makes me a little jealous the fact that this does a better job focusing than my A7S III or my A1 does right now because it basically will lock on to anything, anywhere, anytime and hold it really well. And that includes not just people and humans with eye and face detect, but it includes eye detect on things like animals and insects and includes airplanes, cars, boats, all of that. It really has a wide range of subjects that it will detect and then focus on, which makes this a great camera for beginners because, well, for anybody shooting, even a B camera or something for people who are shooting full frame Sony, the autofocus that Sony's coming out with now is just insane with that new AI system built into the newer cameras. It's really truly something that's mind-blowing. One of the downsides for me is the fact that it only has five stops of IBIS in body image stabilization. So if you pair that with a lens with optical image stabilization, it will get a little better, but you're still very limited on the in body image stabilization or the built-in stabilization in the camera. That being said, you can use active stabilization, which is digital, and it will crop in a bit and give you a little bit better stabilization. But for me, it's still not quite good enough because when you look at something like the A7R5 or the A7C2 even, which is a little bit more expensive than this camera, you get a lot better stabilization, especially if you're doing a lot of things handheld. But that being said, this photo here was taken at one fifth of a second or one fourth of a second and it was handheld. The camera did fine, focused fine and uh, yeah, no problem. Another massive upgrade that Sony made is the controls, the physical controls on the camera, not just this flip out screen, which is nice, much better than the old flip up screen that I had on my A6600 when I had that, but also the fact now you have an AF on button, you can program that to be whatever you want. So I have it set to toggle the 
autofocus, manual focus, on, off. This dial, you've got the dial here, and now you have a front dial. So you have three dials to be able to control shutter speed, your aperture, and the record button is now up on top here where it makes more sense. It doesn't matter to me so much because I always program the shutter button to be my record button. And then you also have a button, a customizable button here, which is nice. More customizable buttons is good. But my favorite feature, which they started with the a7 IV, is this being able to flip between photo, video, and S and Q modes just by using this little dial here. And then because you have three memory recall modes in each of these modes, you essentially have nine memory positions that you can program to be whatever you want. Uh, and it makes switching between photo modes and video modes on this camera really fast, really easy. And when I took this camera with me on that dog sledding trip that you've been seeing photos and videos of so far, uh, it made it really nice because in the helicopter, obviously everything's moving fast. And when dogs are all hooked up, everything's happening really quickly, especially when they start sledding. Having this, being able to switch between photo and video modes really fast and be able to flip back and forth between photos and videos made it super easy to work with this camera and capture everything I wanted to capture during that trip. Because the A6700 is so small and lightweight, but the footage and the photos it produces are fantastic, it makes it one of the most ideal cameras for people who travel and who vlog or create content on the go like I do. And speaking of being on the go, it brings me to the sponsor of this video, which is Aeropress, because they've recently released the Aeropress Go Travel Edition, which is fantastic. I've loved it so much, in fact, that I went out and bought a second one that I'm gonna give away as a Christmas present to somebody in my family. I won't say who because obviously. Everything in this fits in the cup here. As you can see, I've used it. There's a measuring spoon, a stirring stick, the cup, and then you also have the filter pack here, which you put in. And then if you put a little Ziploc bag or something of the grounds, you've got the plunger and everything else you need to make a cup of fresh hot brew coffee, no matter where you are. And if you're like me and you are out in the wild, in the cold, a cup of hot fresh brewed coffee is very welcome about halfway through the day when you've already been freezing your butt off for a few hours. I like how it tastes. There's no bitterness. It just really makes for a really great cup of coffee. And starting today through November 27th, they're running their Black Friday sale, which means if you use the link in the description and code Ranger at checkout, you'll save a good amount of cash on one of the simplest and best portable coffee makers that I've ever used. Now, I said that there were a couple of reasons I'm not getting this camera, and there are. One of them is the single SD card. I do a lot of long form work and something like the FX30 would be a much better camera for me to pair with the FX6 or something like that because it has dual SD card support, but even then I have an A7S III and so that's what I typically use. The other problem with this camera is that long form stuff, especially if you shoot in 4K60, it's gonna overheat, even with the temperature setting to high. Uh, the FX30 does not because it has a cooling fan and it just runs much longer, much better, basically indefinitely. I've run that camera for six hours straight and it hasn't had an issue. So stay tuned for that upcoming review. But the other reason is this, this viewfinder. It is not completely useless, but I really don't like using it. It's so small. It just is very difficult to use for photo or video work to making sure you've got good focus or that the way you want it framed is right. Now the screen is nice, it does a good job and you can definitely see everything you need to see through it, but the viewfinder is necessary sometimes on really bright days. Now, of course, there's a lot more to this camera than I've been able to cover in this video. One of those things is the new menu system, which is absolutely fantastic. And the fact that the touchscreen is now actually a touchscreen and works like it should, but also things like auto framing mode and a lot of other useful features for you if you're a solo creator that really make this camera great. Now, of course, if you're interested in finding out more about the camera or you wanna buy it, there are links in the description. Those are affiliate links. And if you got any value or you enjoyed this video, then definitely consider subscribing. But next, you're gonna to wanna to check out this video right here. I'll see you over there. As always, if you have questions, ask me in the comments below or join my live stream, which happens most Wednesday nights at 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern, or we can have more of a conversation and I can maybe get to questions I didn't get to in this video. I'll see you again soon in the next one. Cheers.